So, um, I actually have a video of the injury. Would you be willing to rewatch it again on camera for us? Uh, nah, not right now. I'll do it another time, not right now. You know, I look at it as, man, you got a short window to play basketball. And I wanted to get everything out of it. You know, I wanted to squeeze that basketball until there's no more juice left. Get a chance to play for your country and represent your country. It's a dream. The next thing to me is winning a championship. The, the night of uh, the, the scrimmage for Team USA, I, I remember the environment being great. You know, so many people there. Looking in the crowds, I knew where my parents were. I knew where friends that I knew were. I felt good that night. We got there and we watched them shoot around and all that. Then the game started. Going through my workouts, I couldn't miss. Then we get to the game and I couldn't buy a shot. But we were like, okay, that's fine. You know, some, they were close. But overall, it felt the game was going in, in, in a great direction. Oh, man. Um, it was a fast break and I was the last man. I turned around and I seen someone, it was James, ahead of me going for a layup. And I chased him down. I went to jump and go block it. And I'm saying to myself, Paul's gonna get that ball from him. And he's running and running and running. And when he went up. You know, I, I missed, I didn't get the ball. But then I came down and it was, it was just awkward. You know, my leg hit the stanchion. I didn't really feel nothing then, um, but I just knew I couldn't put my foot down. Like, I, I couldn't help myself from, from standing. Um, I tried to grab on the mat to help myself. I'm like, you know, why, why can't I stand right now? I looked down to, see, to look at my legs, and I saw my bone. Um, and the second I saw my bone, I just I lost it. I just laid flat. Um, the pain was tough. Uh, as soon as the air hit the bone and, and where the open wound was, it just shot, like, through my whole body. I tried to lift back up to take another look. The OKC trainer um, rushed over and held me down, pinned me down so I couldn't lift back up. He told me, man, he said, you broke your leg, you'll get through this, but it's broke. That was a tough point right there. At that moment, I was thinking in my mind, I hope his career is not over. I wish somebody would have woke me up and said, I was, you know, you had a bad dream. That's how bad it was. Everything just slowed down. Like I could hear every individual in the arena talking. I could see it was so much going through him. And I was just squeezing his hand, he's squeezing my hand, and I just said, look, just, you know, everything's gonna be all right. It was very painful. This could have been it for him. They brought a stretcher out and then that's where the pain kicked in again because they actually had to lift my leg. And then, you know, they, they loaded me up on, onto the ambulance. My mom rode with me. He just kept rubbing my hand and I was trying to console him. And I just kept rubbing him like, you're going to be okay, you're going to be okay, you know. Um, while I was, right before I was about to go into uh, surgery, he told me, you know, it was a compound fracture. Um, I broke my tibia and fibula, um, and that they were going to put a rod down my leg to help support it, and you know the three screws to keep it in place. Uh, is that rod going to be there forever? Yeah, yeah, it's a part of me. <laughs> Extra bone. <laughs> in his eyes, it wasn't really fear, but it was like control. I never cried. I never cried about the, uh, with the whole leg being broken. You know, when I was in the hospital, I had some, some, you know, the same guilts I was having about me not being able to play and not being there for my teammates this year. All of that was going through my head, and I was, I was really down on myself about it. Um, I was just really disappointed that this happened. I had a lot of visitors on the day of, of the injury. Um, and then the next day, Floyd came by. And, and that was like my first time telling everyone I was all right through social media. It was overload, you know, from 
you know, celebrities reaching out to me, to the casual fans. Every time I updated, it was like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of comments. You know, it, it made you feel, you know, it made me feel like I wasn't in it alone. Probably about two or three weeks in, it was just hard to move around. So literally, I would be in one room for about 12 to 13 hours. Um, I had to depend on pretty much everybody at that point. I would be like out of breath to go from downstairs to upstairs. By the time I got upstairs, I was dizzy. And it was just like, man, it's, it's not for me. <laughs> you know what you can do and what you can't do. And the biggest part about it is, is just conquering everything with your mind. Um, I know it's going to be stuff. It's going to be days where it's going to be hard for me and tough for me. Um, and I'm looking forward to those days. I felt I was immortal. You know, I, I felt I, I was invincible. You know, I've, I've made so many plays where guys go down and I walked up clean from it. So I, I, I did feel that nothing bad could ever happen to me while I was on the court. And to this day, you know, I, I don't even want to think about, you know, once I'm healed, you know, that'll be the last that I think about being hurt again. He has something to prove on the court even more now. When he was hurt, he was laying on the bed and said, Dad, when I come back, I'm going to come back a beast. You know, I, I really believe everything does happen for a reason. So there wasn't no disappointment of, you know, why this injury happened. It was just something that I knew that was going to be a part of my story. This was the old me. Now this is the new me, and I think it's a rebirth. I will be back.